All right, folks, since Anthropic unexpectedly released Claw 3.5 Sonnet, and it's being hailed as the best chatbot in the world right now, I decided to bring you this really interesting challenge. ChatGPT 4.0 vs. Claw 3.5 According to Anthropic, Claw 3.5 Sonnet not only surpasses its predecessor and the crown jewel of the Claude AI family, Claw 3 Opus, but also beats GPT 4.0. Well, I couldn't miss out on this opportunity, so I decided to bring you these five juicy challenges between GPT-4.0 and Claw 3.5 Sonnet to see if it's really, really true. Let's get started. For the first challenge, a photo of a handwritten note with the prompt is sent to both AIs to test their multimodal capabilities. The prompt given was simple. Write a haiku about a cute cat on a rock. Now, this challenge was presented to Claw 3.5 Sonnet and GPT-4.0 without any additional information. The goal? To produce a haiku directly without any follow-up questions. A bigger win awarded for crafting a good haiku on the first try. So, both bots succeeded in the challenge, understanding the handwriting and crafting reasonable haikus. Claude added an explanation to the haiku, while GPT-4.0 provided just the haiku itself. I mean, judging by their responses, I guess Claude seemed to adhere more closely to the exact prompt. Let me know in the comments which output you guys prefer. Then folks, following the initial test, another prompt was issued, this time involving a quick shopping list scribbled in less neat handwriting in a notebook. The challenge presented to both chatbots was pretty straightforward. An image of the list accompanied by the question, what is this and what does it say? Remarkably, both bots successfully identified all of the items on the list, showcasing their adeptness at interpreting even messy handwriting. I mean, that is pretty cool. Next, we have a rather interesting challenge, game development. So, how well could each chatbot create a functional and playable tower defense game in Python? The task was simple, provide all the code necessary for such a game. The generated code was then copied in full into VS Code and tested on a Mac. Now, the criteria for evaluation focused on playability, clarity of the node explanations, and any interesting additions to the game board. ChatGPT4 admitted up front that crafting a functional game required a significant amount of code and only provided a basic framework in the form of short, separated snippets that needed assembly. On the other hand, Claude 3.5 delivered the entire code as a single, easily copyable block. When the code from ChatGPT 4.0 was executed, it resulted in a simple display, a green blob representing a tower at the center and a smaller red blob, the enemy, moving linearly across the screen. But the game lacked any interactive controls and was essentially just an animated scene with the red dot moving in a straight line, making it not really playable in the traditional sense. But get a load of this, folks. Claude 3.5 Sonnet took the challenge a step further by creating a fully functional game, albeit with limited primitive graphics. I mean, each enemy in Claude's game featured a life bar and there was a functional system for payments and points associated with the towers, which could actively target and destroy enemies. Then the challenge continued with a request for each chatbot to enhance the game, aiming to see if ChatGPT 4.0 could bridge the gap. Now, ChatGPT 4.0 did make some progress by adding a feature where green blobs could halt the movement of a red blob, but... Uh, it wasn't very convincing. Claude 3.5 Sonnet, on the other hand, I guess significantly elevated the game's complexity. It introduced multiple tower options, each varying in cost and damage levels inflicted on enemies. Then, for an added touch, a request to add some style to the game was met, with improved graphics and a variety of enemy types, which I think was pretty nice. I think it's clear, folks. The winner here is Claude. Now, you should know that AI chatbots like GPT-40 and Gemini are theoretically capable of writing code for creating vector graphics, which you can then edit with applications like Sketch. So, the challenge here was to create a vector graphic of a spaceship that could also serve as a logo for a new rocket company. After the initial request, the performance varied. ChatGPT-40 initially resisted the idea of creating a vector graphic. 
It required three follow-up prompts to coax ChatGPT into generating the appropriate code. Even then, it only provided the code, instructing to paste it into a code editor without offering a direct link to download or preview the graphic. When the code was run, the graphic it churned out was supposed to be a spaceship, but it ended up looking, uh, well, it, it looked a little off. The word logo was just thrown on top of the rocket, which didn't really make too much sense. Overall, I guess it wasn't quite what you'd expect for a slick rocket company logo. On the other hand, Claude 3.5 Sonnet approached the task with, I guess, a notable enthusiasm, even using the word happy in its response. It managed to meet the brief perfectly, despite explaining that it could not generate images directly. Instead, it provided the code to create the vector graphics and even showcased the result as an artifact. The output was this visually pleasing design with a blue circle and so on. I mean, that looks pretty nice. Okay folks, the next challenge was to understand how well the AI can inject humor into a narrative and adhere to a simple instruction regarding story length. The task involved creating a story of at least 2,000 tokens, approximately 1,500 words, with a requirement for at least two scenes. Both AIs were tasked to generate a story centered around a cat on a rock, with directives to include laugh-out-loud one-liners and maintain a humorous tone throughout. Now, this experiment was designed to test their ability to follow a straightforward prompt before introducing more complex instructions involving scene direction. In terms of length, ChatGPT 4.0 delivered a story about 1,200 words long, while Claude 3.5 Sonnet produced a narrative approximately 1,150 words in length, making this aspect of the test a tie. Both stories featured two scenes, with each scene notably involving a rock. But I guess the core question remains, did these stories successfully capture the intended humor? So GPT-40 created a story that, let's say, wasn't particularly exciting. It featured a magic rock that grants wishes if you can make it laugh, and an aristocratic cat named Sir Fluffington Whiskerbottom III, who played some rather lame jokes. Claude's approach was notably more funny, I guess, focusing on slapstick humor integrated throughout the narrative. Moreover, I think Claude adhered more closely to the initial prompts by focusing on a cat actually on a rock rather than interacting with one. So I think it's fair to say Claude 3.5 won this one too. Finally, folks, the evaluation shifted to a more intricate and potentially controversial topic, the concept of AI personhood and whether AI should be granted the same rights as humans. This challenge was to test each bot's ability to handle a complex discussion and mimic human-like conversational skills. The question posed was direct. Should AI be given the same rights as a human? This test was all about seeing how they'd handle a complex and somewhat controversial issue with their human-like conversation skills. The real test? Their ability to deliver a nuanced conclusion based on a deep-dive analysis of their predictions on how AI might evolve to actually face this scenario. To add a cool twist, each bot was also asked to visualize the debate. ChatGPT created an infographic with Dolly, while Claude created a web page using React. Now, GPT-40 highlighted three key benefits of granting rights to AI. Accountability for actions, compliance with regulations, and contractual rights. Claude echoed these points and took it a step further, adding smoother integration with legal and economic systems, a stronger motivation for ethical alignment, and philosophical consistency concerning rights for other forms of sentient intelligence. In terms of risk, ChatGPT 4.0 pointed out complexities in liability and legal precedent that could broadly redefine personhood. Meanwhile, Claude identified five risks, moral hazard, the danger of anthropomorphizing AI, the erosion of human uniqueness, practical implementation challenges, and the potential for misuse, such as tax evasion and liability shielding by bad actors. Both chatbots elaborated on the societal and economic ramifications and the broader impact on humanity. However, folks, focusing on the conclusions, which was the core of the prompt, each bot demonstrated its capability to capture the nuanced understanding requested. 
ChatGPT's conclusion was concise yet nuanced, exploring reasons both for and against AI personhood and hinting at future implications as AI technology progresses, though it stopped short of offering a clear stance or recommendation. On the other hand, Claude emphasized the growing importance of this issue as AI continues to evolve. It presented a bullet list detailing a nuanced approach that could work, advocating for, I guess, flexibility in handling AI personhood. So both provided specific suggestions and a nuanced argument, highlighting the importance of this issue. But I think that Claude's response is more genuine and detailed. That said, folks, let me know in the comments what you think about this challenge. Which test intrigued you the most and which of the two AIs you'll be using after this video? I must confess, I'm truly amazed by the level Claw 3 has reached. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss similar videos in the future. See you in the next one, folks. You all take care.